Welcome everyone to the African history uh, quiz here. And uh, a lot of famous people in this picture here. Huh? Uh, who's this that I'm ho hovering over next to Malcolm? Anybody know that? Just, just out of curiosity. It's Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells, that's right. Now who's this, who's this back of uh, Garvey's head? Our first billionaire, Madam C.J. Walker. Madam C.J. Walker. That's right. That's right. Uh, who's this? Who's this lady right here next to Martin Luther King? Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Ch you know, I used to love to hear Ch Shirley Chisholm speak. Mm -hmm. you, you know her. She was funny. Yeah. Unbought and unbossed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And uh, this guy here, uh, right next to her. Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass. Frederick yeah. Douglass, uh, Frederick. the owner of Marcus Bookstore. Uh, his name was Julian Richardson. Everybody called him Rich. Uh, his hair was like Frederick Douglass. You know, it was just, it was, <laughs> you know, he, it was long like that, gray. He had, he, he would have it over to the side. Uh, back here, you know, I heard this story about this gentleman. I was very saddened to hear this. I can't remember if it came from Dick Gregory or, but who who is this gentleman here uh, above Martin Luther King? That is George Washington Carver. Carver. George Washington Carver. And they say that he he spoke with a very high-pitched voice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they said he sounded like a woman, huh? Yeah. He had, he yeah. had been castrated as a child. Yeah. That's that's, yep. where, that's where I was going. I, when I heard that, I was just, because because he was raised by a white family. Yes. And, and, and they didn't want him, you, you know, and they had a daughter. So they they castrated him like he was an animal. It, you know, uh, from, ahead, from, from, from my understanding, he was kidnapped and castrated by KKK Knight Riders. That is that the way the story goes? God. I'm pretty I mean, sure. I'm pretty sure that's that's the, the, the true story. And that is why we cannot teach African and African-American history in the state of Florida, because because we just don't want people to know. Now, now, who's this young lady here next to Frederick Douglass? And, and, and I have to cut. Jameson, Jameson, she's an astronaut. Jameson, Jameson is something. Jameson. Yeah. Jameson. May Jameson. May Jameson. I have a, um, a picture of her, and she autographed it for me. When I worked at uh, wow. Kennedy Space Center, I got a chance to see all of the astronauts. I got a chance to see most of them um, because I work closely with them. Yes, I have several um, autographs from several um, astronauts, especially our people. Wow, you guys are, I'm telling you, you guys are happy. <laughs> now, who's this uh, to, uh, you know, next to her? This picture is a little blurry, I, you know, if you can't see it clear. I think it's one of the, um, one of the tennis stars. Okay, it that would like be like Serena, right? Or I, I think it's Serena. I think. Is it mm -hmm. Serena? Yeah. And uh, now she just had a birthday here. Yeah. Um, Angela Davis. Angela Davis. That's right. Bo okay. Booming fro. Uh, you know, I was in. Uh, uh, those of you that live in Oakland, there there used to be uh, on Park Boulevard. Uh, a health food store. Um, it was on Park Boulevard, and I and I went in there, and you know, and I was going through the aisles, and I looked up, and there was this woman. She had she had locks at the time, mm -hmm. and I said, "Are you Angela Davis?" You, you know, because I was like, you know, this was those early days when not everybody had locks. Yeah, you, you know, and uh, and I looked, and I said. Are you Angela Davis? And she said, yes, you know, and 
you know, we just kind of smiled at each other and, and just and just went on shopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, now, isn't it true that she's married to a white woman? Could be. I, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. I'm not Angela Davis's biggest fan. Okay. I'm just we're just naming names here. All well, right. it was in the it was in the picture. It's a beautiful picture. It is a beautiful picture. It is beautiful. And and next to her, it's actually a resident who was born and raised in Sacramento here. Cornell. Anyone? Cornell West. Cornell West. Cornell West. Cornell West. Yeah. You know what? I have a picture. I need to dig it up. So 1977, Sac State. I'm in the blocks getting ready to run the 100 meters. And there was this guy there. His name was Cliff West. And that's that. And that's Cornell's brother. He was he. He was a little bit older than uh, than us, and he he had been a miler, and he changed and 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 became a sprinter. So the fastest time I ever ran the hundred meters, I ran a ten three in the hundred meters, uh, and, and he's in there. and And I keep saying I'm going to find that picture and I'm going to send it to him because we're coming out of the blocks together, Cornell West. All right, I think we I think we got every I, I can't make out who this is uh, uh, back there by uh, Dr. Carver. I can't make out who that is. Anyway, let's continue. I see some 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 things in the chat. Okay, um, some things are private. All right. Uh, hey, so here we go. Our first question. Man, I, I need to minimize you guys because I can't see. All right. Because I can't see this. Thing. Okay, it's a misnomer. But what African American is known as the Black Edison? I can't recall his first name. His last name is Grant. Uh, you, you know what? You're close. You're close. Anyone? Anyone else? Let's let's try. Don't uh, don't look it up. We're we're on a. We're on the honor system here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Years ago, you'd have to go and get some books or something. But, but now we're... Uh... So it's a misnomer. But what African-American is known as the Black Edison? You know, Edison was really kind of like a rip-off artist. That's right. You, you, you know, and this, this brother here... Uh, would would have to take Edison to court to get his to, to get his pat and he defeated Edison. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, uh, no, let's see. Did someone put that put it in the chat? Garrett, you know what? That's you're, right. You're, you're close, Garrett. Garrett Morgan, you, you, you know what? You're close. That it, wasn't close enough. It, 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 it's it's not him, but here here he is. Granville T. Woods. T. Woods. Mm -hmm. Granville T. Woods. And uh, he he did a lot of things <laughs> with uh, railroad uh, telegraphy. So, you know, you're on a you're on a train and uh, a tree has fallen across the tracks and, uh, you, you know, somehow the, the, the station finds out. And they want to send you a message. That's one of the th that's one of his inventions. And and my wife was just telling me, um, uh, the person who uh, gave us VoIP, voice over IP, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and w which really allows us to uh, uh, Skype and and Zoom today is a sister. I don't know her name. But uh, Bill, do you, are you aware of that? Uh, do you know? Did you know? No, that? I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, yeah, that's that was amazing. You know, you know, black people are amazing. So, okay, let's go on to the next one. The Minister in Hotel. Yeah. They spoke about her on the view today, and I can't remember her name. Yeah, but... that's that's what Doris was saying. Yeah, because she watches the view. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she sent it to me, so I'll I'll look it up. Uh, a little bit later, but wow, it's amazing. Uh, uh, you know, because um, I was in that field 
Uh, I mean, we we installed the voice over IP uh, here in the county. I had no idea done by a sister. All right, next next question. What African? This is an easy one. This is a this is a softball question. These are all not really difficult and arcane. What African American inventor developed the first long lasting light bulb? Were you going to say something? Mm -hmm. No. Anyone? Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? You guys were close. You, you guys were close on the last one. Louis Latimer. Louis Latimer. So, you know, he didn't invent the light bulb, but he invented the first long lasting light bulb. Uh, and okay, at, at the University of California, Berkeley, there, there's a hall there called Latimer Hall. It's named after him. I'm, I'm sure most people don't know that. But uh, he invented uh, a, a lot of things dealing with electricity. And he actually worked with and for Edison. Uh, you know, so there, there's, this, there's this group called the Edison Pioneers. And uh, he was he's one of the original Edison Pioneers. And they had a, um, uh, you know, a gathering uh, anniversary of the Edison Pioneers. And his family was there. You know, they were all, because they, they knew the important role that he played. And they didn't even mention him. You know, but anyway, we're mentioning him today. Uh, Louis Latimer, if I'm not mistaken, also gives us uh, the prototype for the gas mask and the um, the uh, the stop light. Um, you know, red, yellow, and green. He hey, he gave us the the black colors in the in the uh, in the stop light. Uh, so, uh, so there was something at Lake Erie, uh, you know, it was a mine in Lake Erie under, underneath, uh, Lake Erie and some, some miners got trapped and, uh, you know, people were like, oh God, we need to, we need to do something to save these, uh, miners. And then someone remembered where, uh, Louis Latimer, excuse me, I'm, I'm confusing that. That's, that's a different person. That, that's, that's that's uh that's uh, uh garrett morgan sorry 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 it's, it's not latimer but latimer did a lot with uh the electricity particularly the long lasting light bulb are you saying that latimer also has something to do with the spotlight no say? that's henry highland garnett oh i thought garrett not morgan. Not, not, not not henry highland garrett, garrett morgan, morgan Gar Garrett traffic Morgan. light and the uh, uh, gas mask. Yes, yes, that's Garrett Morgan. But uh, right. light bulb is Louis Latimer. Sorry, right. sorry to go on that. Uh, yeah, the filament. Yeah, that he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, so the light, the light bulb had already been invented, but it would just stay on for like you know a few seconds, and then it would go out. And uh, how useful is that? Not really. So uh, he he developed a carbon filament. Uh, that allowed the light bulb to burn, and and and, and it was called the long lasting uh, light bulb. Okay, next Before one. Before we leave light bulbs, one okay. of the more interesting tales I ran across over the last year or so was talking about how the East Germans had extended the life of incandescent bulbs over twenty years. And there's a really famous light bulb in a fire station somewhere in the Bay Area. I forget exactly where. But it's one of the more dramatic cases, the East German case is one of the more dramatic cases of an industry organizing itself to limit the life of its product. And it's very, very well documented, unlike others are well hidden. Whoa. In the case of light bulbs, there was essentially a consortium of light bulb makers who decided we're only going to make them to last a year. That's it. Well, uh, even though they they could do much better, and the East Germans didn't care, they just didn't want to replace them. So 
they made them last 25. Well, you know what? Thank you, Bill. Uh, I, I knew that you would be really good for this uh, this quiz. Uh, that's that's a really a great uh, thing to to let us know about. Um, this person that I'm going to mention now, not an African, but a great inventor uh, uh, an opponent of Edison. Because like I said, Edison just stole other people's inventions, uh, you know, for, for the most part. And uh, this person, his name was Nikola Tesla. If you did a search on Nikola Tesla, and there's a, there was a PBS um, movie made uh, years ago now, and it's called Tesla, the Master of Lightning. So many inventions. And, uh, you know, on the same theme of, of the light bulb, of, you know, causing it to only last a certain amount of time so that we can make money off of this. But Tesla had, had found a way to provide wireless electricity you know, so you wouldn't have, or, or just uh, what, what's what's now referred to as free energy. You would you wouldn't have to go into people's uh, countries and take out their minerals and and do all these things because there's something uh, that's referred to as the ether that all of these things can be provided for. Uh, that's. That's a person, I'm not going to go into it any, any further, but uh, Nikola Tesla, really interesting story. All right. Okay. What African woman was called the Moses of her people? Ooh, 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 Cecily Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet Tubman. <laughs> well, I was close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta keep up with you, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is a really interesting. This is a young picture. You don't you, you don't see a lot of young pictures of her. You know, this is the one you usually see mm -hmm. of, 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 uh, of Cicely Tyson of uh, Harry Tubman. <laughs> <laughs> and here she is again. And that's her, you know, in her later years. Mm -hmm. um, one, one, one very interesting story about um, Harriet Tubman is that she, when she was like a, a girl, uh, somebody was, was uh, chopping some wood and the, the ax came off the handle and, and flew across the yard wherever she was and uh the blunt part hit her in the head and this caused her to have fainting spells she she could have those at at any time and but yet she was able to do what she did she went across the mason and dixon line 19 times and uh freed 300 people she said, she said, um, she said if, if, if she could, she would have, she would have freed more. One of the people that she tried to freed was her own mother. And her mother uh, uh, wouldn't look at her, she said, because so that she could truthfully say that she didn't see her. This thing is deep. All right. Anybody want to add anything else? Uh, to uh, Harriet Tubman. There's a statement attributed to Harriet Tubman. I freed hundreds of slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they had just known they were slaves. That statement actually appears in a play about Harriet Tubman after her death. Those words apparently were never attributed to her directly. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, thank you. I knew, I knew we'd have some good fact checking today. I really, you know, this is where I live, you know, so I, I really, uh, uh, 
Also, uh, Bill has put in the chat that uh, she's only a woman to ever lead the U.S. Army in battle. Or, yeah, isn't that something? The only woman to ever lead the U.S. Army in battle. Wow, uh, just a great, um, uh, uh, a great uh, person in 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 history. She wasn't she a spy? She was also mm -hmm. a spy. Yes, yes. She was a spy. And yeah. one of the and, and one I, I can't remember if, it, if it's attributed to her, or if it's um, if, if someone else did this. But um, you, you know, one of the codes that they would send to the uh, uh, Union Army officers is the way that they would ha hang out their clothes, and uh, that would that that was like a signal. You know that 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 meant something. Anyway, anyone anyone else want to add something to uh, to to Harriet Tubman? All right. Next question: What African general led an army of one hundred thousand troops and three hundred elephants across the Alps mountains to defeat the Roman army? The great Carthaginian. Yeah, yeah. Hannibal. The great Carthaginian. I, I remember you did a whole class on that, like for three weeks. I actually, I think, it was, I think I think it was. I still got the material. I still that, have it. Is that um, right? I, yeah. I think it was a little bit longer. It was a UC extension. Okay, was it longer? Okay, it was a long yeah. time. Yeah, it was a UC extension class, and we talked about Hannibal Carr. Barker or Hannibal. Um, anybody know um, where his uh, people? Okay, there. So when you think of Carthage, it's present day Tunisia. And if you look at a map, uh, it's just 90 miles away from uh, from Italy. You know, that 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 boot of, of Italy. And there's some islands there. I can't uh, think of the name of them right now. Uh, just between them, Malta and Sicily. Yeah, the, 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 there. I, I want to say Corsica too. Corsica and Sicily. Yeah. Thank you for the correction. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and he was known to ride this particular elephant because you know uh, African elephants, the ears are bigger, and somehow he. Uh, uh, I don't know how they got this. This is an Indian elephant, you know, because the ears are are, are different, and uh, you know he has this 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 type of hair. But um, uh, originally, some of the uh, uh, Card Haddons, Doctor Ben, in his book uh, "Black Man of, of the Nile and His Family," uh, he he said that the place was called Card Haddas, uh, came from. Uh, what was then called Canaan, you know, which is like um, where 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 Israel is now and and Lebanon, that region. And those people came and uh, blended in with the uh, Africans that were living uh, there uh, in now present day Tunisia. So this is Hannibal here, and. Uh, one of my main sources for finding out this information was an article that was done by Wayne Chandler in uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema's Journal of African Civilization. Uh, so he had, there were several editions um, and, and it was called Great Black Leaders, Ancient and Modern. And, and a, a lot of my information came from that article and, and I, I had a personal conversation with Wayne and uh, he, he, he was saying he had to really dig uh, to find the information because, uh, you know, they, they covered up a lot. They, they do not want you to know that, that Hannibal, what he did as, as far as like a general, even when he was defeated, um, you know, after like, 14 or 15 years later, uh, he went back to uh, become 
the head of state. And uh, when the Romans saw that he was, that they were about to pay off their debt, they invaded and uh, he ended up uh, committing uh, suicide by taking poison rather than to be taken. It was, a, this is a, this is a movie that needs to be made. This is a, this is a story that needs to be told about the great work of uh, Annabelle. Okay, next question. I'm going to check this chat. Now, now, by the way, if you're sending me something private, um, I, I, I don't know how I would know that, but uh, I, I, I want to check this. Hopefully, this isn't okay. So, Bill, uh, Dr. Croak invented VoIP and changed the world. Thank you. Yes, and thank you, thank you, Bill. I missed the show. Yeah, I, I, I did but, too. But I had seen her story before. Yeah, I didn't know that, man. I was because I'm telling you, uh, we we did so much with with VoIP, and uh, I, all that time I didn't know it was a black woman that uh, that brought it forward. So, what Caribbean African general? Uh, defeated Napoleon and the French army uh, in the Western Hemisphere. Toussaint Louverture. That's right, Toussaint Louverture. There he, there he is. Now, can anybody else name the the generals uh, that uh, and uh, heads of state that he worked with? Uh, any um, any anyone can come forward with with those. The one that comes readily to my mind would be Dessalines. Jacques Dessalines. Mm -hmm. Jacques Dessalines. Another one would be Henry Christophe. Ah. Jacques Dessalines and Henry Christophe. Uh, he, he, his, his story ended in a <laughs> tragedy. Mm -hmm. You know, he had they had defeated Hannibal. And, or he had defeated Napoleon. Uh, excuse me, they had defeated Napoleon. And um, I'm still stuck on Hannibal. And uh, somehow he got tricked coming out. <laughs> he could have just stayed in Haiti. Uh, and he ended up uh, coming out on a boat, <laughs> you know, by the French. They kidnapped him and, you know, took him to France. And he died in a, in a French uh, prison. Yeah. Is this, this has been a while, Monte Cristo, is that the movie? Was it based upon him, Monte Cristo? Oh, The Count of Monte Cristo? The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, no, but we're going to talk no. about it. I, I, okay, I don't know. You know, you, you know what, I, let me back up. Because I, he I, died in a prison too. Yeah, I think, I think perhaps, I think perhaps you're correct, Bobby. I think perhaps. Okay. And and actually, we're going to talk about that a little later. Okay, all righty. All right. Next question. What African-American educator created Negro History Week? Everyone knows this one. Yeah, Woodson, Carter G. Woodson. Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Yeah. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, right there in Washington, D.C., uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Uh, what what book that is he uh, most famously known for writing? The Miseducation of Your Cousins. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Kitty's on a roll tonight. Tonight, your cousins too. Kitty, there, your cousins too. I claims them. I claims them, but but sometimes I claim them in secret. I know. Do, do you know though that during the time of Garvey, the word Negro was a revolutionary word term mm -hmm. because people were referred to as colored, mm -hmm. and, and and that and that word Negro was actually a revolutionary term. What what is one of the fact? So miseducation of the Negro. What is the famous quote that everybody always does uh, on, on that book? Anybody know? Ask again. I'm sorry. Ask again. 
What is the famous quote from his book, Miseducation of the Negro? Is that if, if, um, okay, I can't quote it, but, um, you, you know, you can about the back door. If you yes. Yes. train the guy for the back door, he'll cut it out himself. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was he, saying we were trained or, you know, trained to, to obey the masters. And if, if, if and we, they could leave us alone because we'll do whatever they say if they're not present, basically. Yes, yes. He said, he said the, the, the educational, I'm paraphrasing, the educational system makes it so that you don't have to tell the Negro to go hither and yon. They'll go there without being told. You don't have to tell them to go to the back door. They'll go there without being told. And if there isn't a back door, they'll cut one uh, because the, this educational process makes it necessary. Okay, I'm gonna look. Yep, clearly demonstrated. Yes, indeed. Ah, oh, Kitty, gotta go. All right, man, we'll see you. See you next time. All right. Yeah, uh, that's clearly the backdoor mentality uh, in Memphis. Uh, it, so it's still going on. Uh, who was the first African president of the modern era? Anyone? Kwame Nkrumah. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. His first name is Osajifo. Anybody know what Osajifo means? Osajifo. That means the savior. Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, in Ghana, or among the Akan people, I should say, because there are some pe people, there are some Akan people living in Togo and other places, uh, actually now around the world, but they have a, a system where uh, the day that you're born, uh, they there's a there's a special name for for each day of the week and so kwami uh means born on a saturday um and uh so uh let's see what's another one so kofi is born on a friday um kweku is born on a on a wednesday my name which is born on a Monday would be Cujo. So yes, so we answered that question. Who's the first African African president of the modern era? Osaj Osajifo and Kwame Nkrumah. What African American scientists revolutionized America's southern agricultural industry? Anyone? What we were just talking about, George Washington Carver, Dr. George Washington Carver, what African American scientist revolutionized America's southern agricultural industry? Uh, anybody, uh, can anybody uh, just tell briefly how he how he did that? How did he revolutionize the the, the agricultural industry in the South? Anyone know the story? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. He introduced several nitrogen fixing plants, which put nitrogen back in the soil instead of cotton, which just took the nitrogen out, depleted the soil. So that included both peanuts and yams and maybe something, I think soy also. He So they were growing, thank you, Bill. They were growing, uh, Minister Bill, they were growing, um, Cotton and tobacco that just depleted the soil. And um, he was recognized as a great scientist uh, in, in his day, and they came to him at Tuskegee uh, University. And uh, so he went to the drawing board and, and he said, the plant legumes. And um, legumes are things like uh, peanuts and sweet potatoes and um, there, there's some other uh, legumes. And uh, 
so he so they did and it replenished the soil but then they came back and said okay uh that helped uh thank you but but now we have all this bumper crop and and it's just piling up in our barns and it's and it's rotting and you know so they weren't happy he, he he's replenished the soil so he went back to the drawing board and that's how he came up with 300 products from a peanut uh 45 different <clears throat> products from a, a sweet potato and and uh you know he so he was just a very brilliant person and also i think this this comes from dick gregory as well um the you know when henry ford was was producing uh cars and it's called you, you know what is his what is his uh uh, uh henry uh, this is for henry ford now what is henry ford's uh place where they where they created cars what was that called detroit or dearborn uh, i'm not sure what you're asking yeah uh, okay where 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 they produced cars what was that called um factory manufacturing oh. factory yeah you guys are close production, production was, line Assembly line. Oh, an assembly, line. assembly line, I said, yeah. The, all, you know, all those are, 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 are great answers, but the answer that I'm looking for was called a plant. A oh. plant, okay. Is it, I, mean, I mean, that's so basic, you, you know? Wow. Somebody did, I wanted to ask, did he do most of his research at Tuskegee then? He I did most so. of it at Tuskegee? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Think so. yeah. Judy, are you on here? Do you do you know that? He yeah. was also rather quickly accelerated into the professoriate at, I believe it was Iowa State. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, bef just before he came to Tuskegee. Yes. And uh, he also was part of the great innovation there in disseminating education, like now, many of our universities have programs to put their lectures and other educational materials online and essentially open to the public. But even in the early 1900s, they were basically taking wagons around to teach people all around Alabama. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Alva also has something to do with the production of rubber as well. He was just a brilliant man. Thank you for that. Oh, I wanted to add too. I'm sorry, I finally can sit down. Um, I used to work in the Carver, George Washington Carver Museum. Yes. And um, the school that, it was called the Movable School. Booker T. Washington and Carver, you know, came together and they said, if the farmers could not come to the school, let's take the school out to the farmers. So they had something called the, Jessup truck, I'm sorry, Jessup wagon. And they would go out and teach people how to, you know, add nitrogen to the soil and don't continue growing the same crops, rotate your crops. Carver taught, yeah, that was a lot of things. And the other thing, if you go visit Tuskegee, um, Tuskegee University is the only school college that's part of the National Historic, is a National Historic Park site. And the museum itself, when you go in, there's a, a phone receiver you can pick up and you can hear the actual voice of Carver. And they show the film with a lot of live footage of Carver. And you can see some of that on, on YouTube, some of those films. All right. All right. Thank you. Quite Thank you. moving. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's true. Somebody should do that. Uh, somebody should do a tribute on on Carver and those and those Jessup wagons. Also, uh, one last thing: Carver did a lot toward polio. I don't know if you all know he developed um, a machine and um, that people could get in, sort of like a CAT scan. They got into this big metal thing, and he had a lot of contributions to do with the treatment of polio. 
Yeah, he's just a brilliant man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. I don't know why. Oh, here we go. Name the person of African descent located in France who wrote The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo. This is, this is, uh, anyone name who this is? Is it Dumas? Was it, yeah, wasn't that his son? His son. Say again. His son wrote the book, right? On the count of Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I'm tripping. Okay, hold on. <laughs> all right, go ahead, Emma Tap. I'm messing up over here. Go oh, ahead. No, 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 no. Th th this is all. We're all in varying degrees of ignorance, so it's 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 all right. But but someone someone just said it. Um, Christmas Adam. No, not Crispus Attucks. Oh. Crispus Attucks was the uh, first person to fall during the uh, uh, Boston Revolution. Uh, I thought his son was named Alex or something like that. No? Gosh, wasn't it the... Dumas? Alexandra Dumas. Dumas. Alexandra Dumas. Dumas, thank you. And this is him. Uh, you know, a, a young portrait of him. And uh, here he is later in life. Um, person of African descent. And, and, and okay, so the Three Musketeers, and uh, I think those, those were, or, or his father or somebody was one of those Three Musketeers. That's, that's, that's what caused him to write that. And the Count of Monte Cristo, might be as as Bobby had, had uh, raised later. I'm I'm not really familiar with with that story. It might it might be the exiled um, uh, uh, Toussaint Louverture. I'm 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 not. So don't don't uh, quote me on that part. I need to look that up. All right, Minister M. Hotep. I don't know if it's true, but I heard as well that they were really kind of on the sweet side. That's where they came up with the candy bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not, that may not be true. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, name the African queen who defeated the Dutch and fought the Portuguese to a standstill for 40 years. Anyone? Uh, great. Was she from Jamaica? Oh my gosh. No, 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 she was she was on, on the African continent. She was on the African continent. Was it in Zinga? Zinga. In, in the only Zinga. one I know is in Zinga. That's it's the only in, one I know. Yeah, it, it was in, in mm -hmm. Zinga. Yeah. In Zinga. And there and so this is a, a portrait uh that was uh made of her. And uh if you went to Angola now, there's this giant statue of her. And and this is what they put put there for her, yeah, great, great, great queen, uh, and and she made her country of Angola a slave free state. And uh, I was talking to um, a friend that uh, spent some time in Bahia, and uh, he was saying that um, they have a tradition in Bahia, which is okay, part of Brazil that uh, uh, Queen, Queen Nzinga sent spies, you know, they went into slavery, went to Brazil to, to help uh, fight uh, the Portuguese in Brazil. And, you know, one of the, one of the famous uh, martial arts fighting forms that's, that's in Brazil now is, is Capoeira or capoeira, however that's uh, pronounced correctly. I think uh, it's capoeira, capoeira, yeah. Capoeira, and, mm -hmm. and it is a, um, it's a very acrobatic um, uh, fighting form. Uh, some people watching it might think, oh, these people are practicing gymnastics, but it's, it's a fighting form. And that was one of the things that they used to liberate themselves. Uh, in uh, Brazil and particularly in Bahia. I took a Capoeira class. It is no joke. Oh, yeah, you got to be fit. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're not, they'll get you fit. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually had a had a close friend. He was uh, he actually ended up being my uh, track teacher. His name was Timba Mashamba. Some of you may know Timba. And I remember when Timba, me and Timba started Capoeira, Capoeira um, uh, together. Yeah, this was in 1979, and uh, uh, the person who was teaching it was a, a a great martial artist in the Bay Area. His name was Johnny Moore, and uh, he was teaching it in Western Edition in San Francisco. But anyway, that's the answer to our question, the Queen, Queen Anne and Zinga. All right, what African country was never colonized? Ethiopia. Ethiopia, right you are. Uh, I thought it was Liberia. Right you are, no, no, it's Ethiopia. I it's just learned that too, reading. I just learned about Ethiopia, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that they were never. Never colonized. Well, never part, of, mm -hmm. part of them were uh, Eritrea, you know, was colonized by the Italian. Uh, in, I want to say 1888, uh, the uh, king was Menelik II. They defeated the uh, Italians, um, and and uh, and actually Menelik uh, renamed the country Ethiopia. You know, went back to that ancient name, or Ethiopia, uh, spelled with an I, uh, and. But but does anybody know what it was called before Ethiopia? Oh, uh, um, mm, 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 mm. Kush. That's a good answer. I think when we refer to Kush, um, um, it's more more referring to uh, the Sudan Sudan area. Yeah, Kush. Uh, anyone? Come on. It was called Abyssinia. Mm. Abyssinia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Abyssinia. Yep. All right. You guys getting tired? All right. Not what yet. African leader coined the phrase, up you mighty race and accomplish what you will? Marcus Garvey. Garvey. Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Come on, keep going. What's happening here? It looks pretty cool in that in that picture. There's a there's a professor uh, professor emeritus I think at uh, from UCLA. He was he's a Jamaican, Robert Hill. He wrote a ten volume work uh, on Garvey. And I got to hang out with him a little bit. You know, we, you know when you when you read about these figures, you're surprised how young they were. Yes. You yeah. know, nineteen twenty. Yeah. You know, it's just the role and the responsibility and the leadership. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, how young they were. That's yeah. that's true. Uh, I remember reading in, um, in um, so his, his second wife wrote uh, the book, uh, The Philosophies and Opinions of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, Amy Jakes Garvey. Uh, and he was talking about when he was 17, he actually led, he, he, was, he was supervising men twice his age, you know, in Jamaica. So he, he, just, he just seemed to have that ability. And uh, when, he, when he came to the United States, the person that, um, that he was trying to visit was... Um, Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington. <laughs> Booker T. Washington. And but he got he got here a, a year too late. I think Booker T. Washington died in 1915, and Garvey didn't arrive until 1916. Yeah. Could I so answer? In my in my mother's papers, um, my grandfather evidently was really into Marcus Garvey. It's the one thing that broke him up that. He spent all the money they were, they had a restaurant started out in New Orleans and then in Louisville, Kentucky. And, um, but he spent, if he wasn't cooking, he was 
involved with Marcus Garvey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people were. He had a lot of people involved. They had they had the Black Cross nurses. They had, you know, they had shops, everything. Oh, Sister Judy, you were going to say? <clears throat> yes, I was just going to add that. Um, and there's a book by a sister, Tyreen Wright, and she's got a lot of really good stuff on YouTube, some real in-depth um, interviews about Booker T. Washington. She did graduate from Tuskegee, and she's, Anyway, in the book, she has letters and correspondence, um, copies of letters between Booker T. Washington and Marcus Garvey. And Marcus Garvey was really a student of Booker T. Um, and when you read the letters, he was really a big mentor. And here in Atlanta, you know, there are a lot of people that, well, not a lot, but there are a group of people here that are Garveyites. Wow. And they have Marcus Garvey festivals with so many people have no, you know, they love Garvey, but they have no idea that Booker T. Washington, who we were duped into believing was an uncle, you know, well, I won't say Uncle Tom, because you told us that was a good person, <laughs> but that he was an accommodationist, didn't know that he wore the double mask, you know, he was, you know, around dealing with Pan-Africanism and helped to go to the UN to fight for the um, to stop the colonization, Booker T, uh, for Liberia. But Marcus Garvey, he did eventually try to get to Booker T. Washington before there's another book out saying that he was killed on um, poison, Booker T. Washington. And so Marcus Garvey did eventually come to Tuskegee shortly after. I never knew that, but he stepped foot on the campus. Wow. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that, that, that uh, ice tree. Uh, with this, yeah, this the you know I'm learning uh, as I'm going along with you all. What is the name of the African American astronomer who helped design Washington D.C.? Shango, are you still with us? Shango. Is it Banneker? Benjamin Banneker. Yes, Thandiway. Thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> Benjamin Banneker. Yeah. Here he is. And I visited his park, the park that they have in his honor. Yeah, yeah. He he uh, was such a great astronomer, and uh, he 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 created this almanac, and it, and uh, the people in the colonies they would keep this almanac next to their bed, uh, along with the Bible. You, you know, so uh, an almanac is very important for planning things and uh, there was, so when they were designing the um, the city of Washington, DC, there was a, a person that came from France. His name was Lafont. There's, there's Lafont Plaza. That's one of the, the stations on the Metro line. And uh, so um, I guess Washington and then they, they did something to, to vex uh, Lafont. So he, so he packed up all his plans and, and, and took them and left. And people were standing around looking, uh, looking stupid. And, and so he, he uh, uh, Banniger, he said, well, did you like the plans? And everybody kind of turned around and looked at him and said, yeah. And he said, well, I think I can recreate them. So he left and uh, came back um, four days later. He, he had a photographic memory. Definitely. Yes, he did. He had a photographic memory. And so the reason why Washington, D.C. is laid out the way it is is due, is due to the credit of Benjamin Banneker. He also invented this um, uh, clock. It was a wood clock. Yes, and it and it kept time for like I, I want to say forty seven years. It kept time perfectly until the day he died, and they either broke into his house and got it, or you know they burned his house down the same day that uh, he died. And uh, and and this clock he had borrowed a clock, a watch from one of his friends, this white guy, and uh, Ellicott City is where he lived, and uh, he did this clock out of wood and it kept perfect time 
And the day that he died, they uh, went in and stole his stuff. And they said that someone did save the clock, but they burned his house to the ground. Lord have mercy. That's, that's yeah. Wow. You know what? I don't I don't know if, wow. you, if a Tony Broder, hmm. he does a tour of DC and part of his tour, he show he lays out how Af, you know how all the African symbols of DC, but he also shows you what Vanikin that the name should be changed, you know, to because I guess there's a bridge or a road that's named after the French Lafont, yeah. Lafont. But actually, it should be Vanica, but he'll show you the distinction of, you know, what he built, you know, taking the plans and built. But anyway, it's a real good tour. It's about three hours. You know, he does it. So in DC, if you ever go to DC, try to catch his, his uh, tour. Mm -hmm. And to this day, uh, Banneker's people have his uh, watch and I have one and every watch that they make have a piece of wood in it somewhere. Wow. So I've wow. One of the oh, watches. they sell it? They still sell yeah. it? Is that a, uh, a uh, they, it's still for sale? I mean, I didn't yeah. know that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Banneger, Banneger has, a, uh, they have a, a website. The watches are beautiful. And uh, each mm -hmm. watch has some wood in it, or on it. So when you buy one, it has this, this wood. It has a piece of wood on it somewhere. Wow. Hmm. Check that out. Thank you for that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let me see if my if my camera's been acting up, up on my um thing here. But um as a matter of fact, I have the Bannerco watch and part and this part right here. Wow. wow. Is actually, Ooh, nice. It's actually wood. And that says, is beautiful. Yeah, it says Banneker on it. But yes, when I did the uh, the tribute about Banneker, I, I bought a watch. So yeah. So it's on the website, right? Yes, yeah, on the Banneker website. Look it up. Banneker there. website. Okay, I'm gonna look that up. That that is that's that's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's great. I want I wanted to add something too to to Banneker. I'm not sure. This is kind of what I think, but you can verify it, Minister Jim Hotep. Uh -huh. I was thinking as well, I thought that I read or that Banneker was also a Freemason. <clears throat> and so a lot of when you read certain books about Freemasonry, you know, you find out as well that DC is set up on, you know, dealing with Freemasonry. So what I was really thinking is, Although Banneker, you know, laid the plan out, it really came from the ancient, you know, there was the Egyptian yeah, systems. Yeah. Yeah, yes. That's oh. why they had that obelisk and everything in its position. It's really yes. Banneker, you know, he had passed the knowledge on and had the insight, but we could give it yes. the credit also to the, the Kemetic ancient. But for for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, uh, it's not an accident that there were 13 colonies. Right, and then he was also uh, the son of a, a Gambian king, by the way. His, uh, and his name was really, the name started out with, uh, it wasn't Banneker, it was Banneker, Banca, like yeah. Don. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that. And uh, yeah, Anthony Browder, he, he wrote a book called Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization. And, and you can find, uh, a lot of this information that you all are saying, if you if you would get that book, I, you, you know, uh, I know we mentioned a lot of books at, at we'll say, but that is one that you really should get. It's called Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization yeah. by, by Anthony. I, book. It's I, a didn't wonderful book. I didn't realize we're it, it's like 622. So let's get through this. And, and uh, uh, going back, let me let me share. Brother Bill has given us the Banneker store uh, website, and you can uh, you can get you a, a Banneker watch. Yep, you sure can. They come in a nice box too, by the way. <laughs> Look at that! Wow, I don't like to wear watches, but I might just change my mind. I uh, know. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. 
So let's move on. Okay. Uh, the Johnson brothers. <laughs> the Johnson brothers, here they are. Yes. So James Weldon Johnson, and what's the other one's name? John, I believe. No, it's it's like Rosamond. Rosamond. What is it, Rosamond? Yeah, and uh, one of them, John, uh, he wrote it, and the other one put the lyrics to it. Yeah, it was a poem that started out as a poem. That's right. That's and they right. wrote the poem for Booker T. Washington. He wow. was coming to visit the school that you... he was uh, a principal, and that's wow. how that all started. Guys. That's that's right. Oh, you and then Booker T. said, "Yeah, let's keep this for the national Nick." Uh, and, and he he uh, said it was good for the NAACP. They adopted it as the National Negro Anthem. Now, when they first uh, recorded it, it was supposed to be the National the National Negro Anthem, but it got recorded as the National Black Anthem. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So, name the yeah, African American so woman who start who started a college in the state of Florida with just a Mary you know, and you were saying, Bobby, uh, just how young the people were. Look how look how young she looks. That, you know, you, that's you, what you, I, I'm sorry. Ahead. No, go ahead. That's what I was going to add when you were mentioning the the ages, or somebody mentioned how young the people were. Booker T. Washington, and when he was sent to be president of um, Tuskegee, he was only twenty something. And Mary McLeod Bethune was the one he, Booker T. Washington took under his wing. And the school is supposed to be modeled after what they call the Tuskegee model. And that was also what Marcus Garvey was coming. There were a few Tuskegees in Africa, mm -hmm. Tuskegee model. You, you know what, we, I, I, I'm glad, cause this has come out tonight, uh, the importance of Booker T. Washington. You, you know, it, it cannot be overstated to uh, African-Americans. He was very insightful. There's a, a in a World's Great Men of Color, volume one, excuse me, volume two, uh, there's, a, there's a really good um, explanation, story, uh, biography of Booker T. Washington. Of course, there are other books. That's where I got mine from. Okay. This make sure it's not written by Harlan. Because that's the one they say the white guy that has all of the Booker T. Washington papers, and he, he wrote. He said he despised Washington, and he's it's a lot that Tyrene White she's done a lot of research says. So I don't know who that's by, but hmm. no, no. Uh, World's Great Men of Color was J. A. Rogers, a and uh, so uh, J. A. Rogers was a person from Jamaica, Joel. Arthur, I think, uh, Rogers uh, wrote uh, uh, that book and, and, and a lot of other books, Nature Knows No Color Line, uh, Sex and Race, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Um, so, and that book, um, those of you that are looking for things for uh, historical tributes, those two books are really good too. World's Great Men of Color, Volume 1, deals with the so-called Old World and uh, volume two deals with the new world. And in the, the new world section, that's where uh, Booker T. Washington, the information on Booker T. Washington. What is the name of the African-American pilot who designed the cockpit of the space shuttle? Anyone know? Fred Gregory. No. Frank Gregory. Major, he was Major Frank Gregory then, and then he became Colonel Gregory. And this is in uh, uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertima's uh, Journal of African Civilization entitled Blacks and Science. I Blacks. didn't know that. I, I doubt that I didn't know, but I, I've been on in the cockpit of the shuttle, but I didn't know he was the one that designed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, moving right along. Name the African king who was known as the richest man in the world. Mansa Musa. Yep, Mansa Musa, and this is a <laughs> map of the world that that, uh, that somebody drew, and and here he had so much gold. Um, uh, you, you know, I think if I, I've seen different things, 
no one can really say how rich he was, but he was known as the richest man in the world. When he went uh, on a pilgrimage to Mecca, uh, you know, he had a he had a large retinue of people. They were carrying gold. When he when he when they went into Egypt uh, and dropped some money down, it destabled the world economy. And then he went on to uh, Mecca, made his pilgrimage, and and dropped some more uh, gold there. And but and 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 he's mentioned in uh, two thousand seasons. This is what started. Uh, they're referred to as the predators in two thousand seasons to come to Africa, because they said, oh, they got all that gold over there, and 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 that's what started. But okay, the answer is Mansa Musa. In what country is one of the seven wonders of the world located? In what African country is one of the seven wonders of the world located? It must be Kemet. Egypt. Yep. Is it one? Yep, Egypt. And and name the wonder. Kemet. Egypt. What? The Sphinx and the pyramid. Sphinx. There you go. So, you, you know, these are not really hard questions that I, get, that I gave. I'm glad <laughs> you are getting them so, so easily. What African river is 4,100 miles long and flows? Nile river. Nothing but the Nile. Nothing but the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> actually, this, this map doesn't really show how far it goes. It, it actually starts in like Uganda. And that's that's the White Nile, and then it flows from south to north, and 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 then uh, it, it it when it goes through Ethiopia, it's it 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 becomes the Blue Nile. They join together, and then they flow all the way out to the um, to the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, what is the name of the African American uh, fighter squadron? who fought with distinction during World War II. It's just the Airmen. Yeah. The Airmen. Tuskegee Airmen. The Red Tail Tuskegee Airmen. The Tuskegee Airmen. My father was uh, really into the Tuskegee Airmen. He, he wasn't old enough to be a Tuskegee Airmen, but he was a junior Tuskegee Airmen, and he actually learned to fly. They had a program uh, where... Uh, he learned to fly an airplane. Now, uh, what I learned um, a couple of years ago was there are a lot of guys here in this area that were Tuskegee Airmen. And I learned that uh, I went to and I met one of them and he said, I've never set foot on Tuskegee campus in my whole life. He said, I don't even know what it looks like. And he said that uh, that if you were uh, a, a Black airmen that they considered you as part of that club, Tuskegee Airmen's Club. So all of the people that have been named Tuskegee Airmen were not necessarily trained at Tuskegee. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I didn't know that. I was kind of shocked when you said that to me. Do, do you know what? I came across Navy men that were elite, and I can't find them um, anymore, that were elite, that were compared to Tuskegee you know, Airmen, I'm gonna try to look their name up again. I came across it and I can't find it because um, I haven't heard of them before. But number two is, what is the best movie for, there's been quite a few movies on Tuskegee Airmen. Which would be the best one? I think I've watched about two of them, but it's been a while. Red well, Tales, know, I think they call it the Red Tales. Is, it, is that the one with Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah, that's the best one to, yeah. I, 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 like I really movie. like that one. Um, I, I don't I don't know if that's the best one, but that 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 one came out. Oh, okay, with Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. Yeah, Lawrence. The, the, I mean, have to revisit. You know, these movies been a while. Yeah. Let's see. Well, that one has a a storyline, and it's got you know romance, and it's kind of more yeah. fictional. I'm thinking the other one. There are some others that are out. If you go on YouTube, they're just some documentary type. Yeah. Presentation. That are really good. Okay. This there's, a, there's a group in um, the East Bay um, that honors the, the Tuskegee Airmen and they're encouraging 
um, African American to um, learn how to fly. Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, 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 the real Lone Ranger of the yeah. was, was this, was this, bro this is who the Lone Ranger is, is based upon. Right. And he was Bass. also the first U.S. Marshal, African American U.S. Marshal. Yeah. You guys are just. You guys are just too smart. Cowboy too. They claim he was the first African American cowboy as well. You guys are just too smart. I want to thank everyone for your participation. We just went over time just a little bit. Uh, it's at six thirty-three. Uh, got a lot, a lot done. Talked a lot. Talk, talked through a lot of things uh, tonight. And and I want to thank you for your contribution because um, we don't know. You know, one person doesn't know everything. And uh, you all have really greatly contributed to this session tonight. Uh, thank you all for your for your kind. It was great, Baba. Great, great um, black knowledge. Yes, it really fun. Well, I enjoyed it. Really oh, fun. Cool, cool. Oh yeah, there he is. There, there, there. She is. Nile Valley contributions to civilization. That's that is a great work. Now. Uh, Next week, we're going to have Brother Bob and Daly on. Um, and right. Sister, Sister Judy, we got your uh, email, and, and, and you're right. We do need to, uh, as a group, as a uh, subcommittee, you know, we need to, to plan out the next schedules uh, for, um, for our uh, Black Knowledge Matters. Also, uh, what you all did. Uh, last week with the movies uh, showed us that that we can do uh, these movies and and make it interesting. So we're going to include that as well. I want to thank everyone uh, for coming tonight, Bill. Uh, you know, you know so much, man, uh, Minister Bill. You 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 have a lot of lot of information, Sister Judy. You have a lot of information, Sister S S Sugar D. Wow, you you. You had a lot of info. Every everybody uh, greatly contributed. So uh, Mona, I heard you there. Bobby, all of you all. All right, all right. So at six thirty-five. Uh, we've just went five minutes over. Nobody's going to kick us out of the room. But uh, glad that that Tony could 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 be with us and and join us and and uh, Mama Rose, uh, Auntie Afua, uh, yeah. uh, Betty Wright Harris. Uh, I don't. I don't know. What, what do you mean? What do you mean, bro? That was the one photo I didn't recognize on the flyer you sent. Oh, oh. The woman in the far right. Uh huh. Let's see. Let, let's 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 go back. Let's see. But let's see. Let's. I. Oh, you know what? That's, That's Oprah that Winfrey. Mm -hmm. No the earlier flyer. So, so 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 he's talking about let's 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 make it bigger. So you're talking about her? Here? No, not the other flyer you sit out. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. The, the one the, that you text us. For, for, yes, oh, that one. oh, okay. I don't have that uh, ready readily available. Uh, but okay. I I see what you mean. But well, maybe you I, remember I, her I, photo? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I just don't have it. Oh, yeah. That oh. woman. Um, her. Oh. Um, I didn't recognize her, so I looked her up. But she's a chemist. Um, evidently quite famous chemist who works at Los Alamos National Lab. Whoa. Uh, looks like, uh, Henry, uh, you're, you're muted. Uh, take yourself off mute. I see you're, 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 you're talking. Yeah, um, where was I? She did an article. Okay, this man, it's been long, been a long time, but yeah, I really can't remember. Because that's where I was stationed outside of there in Albuquerque. Mm. And it was just part of a program. And I can't, yeah. See, so part of military. So 
it, it had something to do with the military. Okay, I can't re yeah. It's happened when you get old. No, you you, you know you, you don't do you don't deal with this every day, and you, you know this just came up, and uh, you know some of the things uh, I, I was forgetting. You, you know, like I'm glad somebody helped out with Alexandra Dumas. <laughs> you know, because I was you know just these are just things you don't deal with every day, and uh, so you know they they can get away with you, uh, or get away from you rather. Right. Wow. 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 Uh, just reading the blurb, they, Los Alamos Lab did a piece on our page on her, and uh, they're talking about how she focused on high explosive nuclear weapons and hazardous materials remediation. Mm -hmm. Maybe she, she was cleaning up some of the mess that the military had made. Who knows? Uh, just another person that, that won't get the credit for it. Uh, and... Uh... And Taylor Swift will will, will play her, uh, uh, her story in the movies. Go ahead, Judy. Go ahead. I, I, pardon me. I was just going to say I wanted to add something about Carter G. Woodson. I think I mentioned it in another class with you. Um, one of my friends who's a, you know, he's a well-known scholar and researcher. He says that um, the book that miseducation, everybody knows about the miseducation of the Negro, but he said, Carter G. Woodson wrote a book before that called The Education of the Negro. And he said, that book is a must read. It's very powerful as well. So you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that. And, and also, uh, I, I had a friend that um, he had a, a, Dr. Carter G. Woodson had a 66 volume encyclopedia too. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just to, I've uh, never heard that is real good trivia. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I would visit him from time to time, and you know, we'd go in his in, in his office, sixty six volumes. You knew him? Okay. No, no, no. I my my friend that had the uh, encyclopedia. No, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really know. Uh, Dr. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, you look how, really, you really look young. How old are you, Emma? <laughs> 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 but are you saying is are there images or places you can see that I have never heard Carter G. Woodson had encyclopedia. Oh yeah, yeah. It was I, I forgot what it's called. I, I think it was like the Journal of Negro Life or something like that. Um anyway, I didn't have it, but it was there were 66 volumes. And 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 then wow. oddly yeah. enough, my, my friend's house caught on fire, and I think those were lost. Well, speaking of bulletins, Carver, Dr. Carver had probably, when I worked in the museum in the gift shop, they printed some of them, but he produced all, he would produce all of these weekly bulletins on everything, how to, you know, how to get nitrogen and the sweet potato, different things for the farmers. And it was maybe about 60 or seven. Tuskegee's archives, they have a lot of really good, a lot of people come there, to, you know, get information yeah it's, my, <laughs> no it's a it's a center you know it's it's a cultural center it's a cult i think it's like the mecca i mean it, i know we, we talk about tuskegee all the time and i might be a tad bit biased but <laughs> but i think it really it really is almost i thought about it i said it's almost like if you haven't touched land you know put on the land sacred and hallowed land, everybody talks about the, camp the campus is beautiful, one of the largest HBCU campuses, but everybody's been there, Malcolm, everybody, the only person that's not been there that I got a chance to meet and sit with was Oprah. She's never been to Tuskegee, and, and, um, really, wow, yeah, I, I, several I presidents, think... Bush, all of, lots of presidents have been there, they spoke at a lot, you know, even our favorite uncle, Thomas, the, the judge, oh. he was one of the commencement <laughs> speakers, Clarence. Oh, oh we're going to have Bill to, you, 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 <laughs> come, you said that name. I'm, I'm sorry, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You said Uncle Tom is a good person, so he was named after a... Yeah. <laughs> But, but, he's but, a real. He's it a real was. <laughs> it was till he came out. Yeah, till he got there. 
You, you know, uh, this is something you might, you all might be interested in. So when he was confirmed as a uh, Supreme Court justice, there's a, there was a famous uh, African-American judge. His name is Judge Higginbotham. You might look up Judge Higginbotham's letter to Clarence Thomas, you know, and uh, it's, it's a very good, you know, essentially he read him the riot act and he, and he's like, okay, you're talking about, uh, you know, the NAACP and this and that and affirmative action. And, but if, if uh, the NAACP hadn't done the work that they did, you would not be able to live where you live. You would not be able to be married to the woman that you're married to. You know, he just oh wow, and, and he just breaks down this law. It's, it's Judge uh, Higginbotham. Don't ask me to spell it. Uh, Judge Higginbotham's uh, letter, open letter to Clarence Thomas, and it, it, it initially it was it was it was uh, published in some law journal, but you could go out on on uh, the net. And, and, and look that up, uh, Judge Higginbotham's open letter to Clarence Thomas. And as we close- uh, Is it Leon Higginbotham? Yes, 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 Leon. Leon. Yeah, okay. Yes, 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 Minister, Leon. Minister Inhotep, I know you're gonna close it out, but also since you mentioned that, I have a book here where chapter one, it's of Donald Trump. It's a book from maybe 20, 15 years ago or so, maybe 10. He's actually chapter one. Guess what his chapter one is? What? Um, Barack Obama. And in that chapter one, he is talking about how he thinks he's such a wonderful guy and he would make such a great candidate. <laughs> it, it's pretty interesting. I don't know. I'm sure they're trying to find, I better not talk too loud. They're probably looking for uh, me to, uh, burn to, to To remove it, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's true. Hey, listen, I'm going to close out uh, with our um, what we believe and what we practice. I did this um, a number of years ago. Um, it's on my album. I have a I have a CD. All right. See you next time, everyone. Live up. This is a great class. Thank you. We'll say Community Church is a community of the way. The way is mott, truth, justice, and righteousness. We believe the teachings of our elders and our ancestors that the Creator God created the universe and placed inside each of us a part of the divine spirit. God living in us and through us has given to us the right and power to establish peace and justice throughout all human life. True harmony with all of creation. We believe in the living faith of our ancestors. Our way is not merely a ritual or a belief. Our way is a way of life. Our way is not a random path. Our way begins with coherent understanding. It aims at preserving a knowledge of who we are. It is with this rich conviction that we study the rich heritage of the African people. The way is reciprocity. The way is wholeness. The way is unity and self-determination. It is creativity and collective work and responsibility. Our way is faith, purpose, and cooperative economics. Our way creates. Our way knows no oppression. Our way worships and praises the God of our ancestors. The way is life. The way only destroys destruction. Right. See you next time. Live up. Oh, and it's the oh. Imhotep. That's why I joined. Well, say because I. That's one of the main reasons I heard that when I was doing research about you before. Well, after I was introduced to Well, say I went to Belief Shop Matthews and found you on YouTube, and I found that. And when I heard that, I was like, Oh wow! I, I would love I, it. I, I never knew that. I never knew that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we're doing a study of sacred scriptures tomorrow. So, oh, and Bill has put in, has put that letter in the chat. Uh, if you, if you, the, the, the Higginbotham letter. Thank you, Bill. So if you want to get that. Uh, 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it's that's very uh, a, a very good uh, 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 a thing to read and and, and to know about. Uh, a lot of a lot of great information. Thank you, thank you, Bill. Uh, and uh, so tomorrow we're we're going to be study of sacred scriptures, and then Friday fri first Friday, Sugar D, want to just give us a little highlight for first Friday before first Friday. We're gonna y'all bring your uh, hats on and bring your frames with you. <laughs> we're gonna do some riddles, and we're gonna do since it's gonna be the love day. We're gonna do some. Uh, we call it the community. Uh, what is it? Roast? What did I tell you? It was a uh, family feud, but it's going to be community feud. Community some, feud. Yeah, we're going to do some uh, family feud stuff about right. the love day. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bill, for, for putting that on there. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on the next two. You know, the first week of the month is, is always is always kind of busy. So we have we have Black Knowledge Matters. We have Study of Sacred Scriptures. And then we have First Friday. So got a lot going on. Uh, tell all your friends. Hope to see you tomorrow. Guidance and protection. Live up.